All right, guys, it's Rev here, and uh, I just want to, we'll scoot these up where you can see them. All right. I want to talk to you for just a moment about some size comparisons. As you know, I've been reviewing the TPSF Elite, and um, a lot of people have been comparing this gun to the Glock 19 form factor, and I just wanted to spend a few moments with you talking about uh, the size and is this a valid choice for a carry gun? We've been working on reliability and accuracy and I'm still working on that testing but I think that we're going to determine that it's a reliable and accurate enough firearm. So uh, moving on with this, just kind of moving into the next stage, I want to talk to you about its viability as a concealed carry handgun. So anyway, we've got uh, a list of just a, a few common uh, guns here lined up. Uh, we could put more, but then it would just get cumbersome. So let's just start here with these three. These are getting talked about all the time. So you've got your old standby, the Glock 19, right? So this has been my carry gun. Well, not this particular one, but um, the Glock 19 has been my carry gun for years. And so I want to talk to you about, this is kind of a standby. A lot of people talk about it as kind of one of the larger uh, guns, a gun that's in a more fighting size that you can that you can realistically carry. And for a lot of people, a lot of people would say that are fans of the single stacks. A lot of people would say that it's just not uh, really carryable for them. But I, like most people, would say that it's kind of on the upper end. It's kind of on the larger side of what I can realistically carry. Um, that has been contrasted a lot with the SIG 320. By the way, congrats SIG for the contract that you've just won. Uh, that's awesome. So this is a stock uh, SIG 320. It's the compact version with the compact medium sized grip. Uh, it does have an aftermarket Apex trigger installed that I'm testing, but, uh, but the form factor is completely stock. So you've got the SIG P320 right next to the Glock 19, and we'll get in a closer shot here in just a moment. But what you'll notice is that this, this grip, um, the, the butt, the part that, because again, I probably should mention this. I, I think most of you know this by now, but the things that are of most concern when you're talking about concealing the way that most of us do inside the waistband, the thing that's of most concern is the width of the slide, the width, the width of the overall gun, and the height or the distance from the top of the slide to the rear of the grip, the magazine rear, uh, because this is what's poking out. This is what's poking out. Um, so we want to look at those dimensions in particular. And we find that the SIG P320 is just a touch. I'll try to show it to you here, but we'll, we'll show it here in just a moment. It's just a touch about the, about the magazine length the, the little base pad uh, width um, taller. And you say, well, that makes very little difference. It's minute. Uh, and you know, you're probably right that you could, if you can carry the Glock 19, you can probably carry without printing the SIG P320, but every little bit makes a difference. So if this is the very top of, uh, of the scale that you've determined is, uh, is carryable, then this is going to be just outside of that scale. I'll get the calipers out here in just a moment. All right, so that being said, the Canik, the TP9SF Elite, is really, really similar sized. It is just a touch, just a touch higher um, than the SIG P320. And the base could be pushed in, you know, if you. It's really, really close. So they're very, very similar. In fact, overall, the dimensions of the Canik and the SIG are really comparable. But you'll notice as soon as I lay them like this, that there's a remarkable difference right away in that though the height and these guns seem similar sized here, there's actually a much longer uh, slide radius on uh, on the Canik than the compact version of the 320. Um, so what you have is 
this beaver tail is far more accentuated on the TP SF Elite than it is on the SIG uh, or the Glock. Now that makes for uh, a really soft recoil feel. I mean, it's, it's honestly, I think the TP SF Elite looks like um, the Ruger SR9 and the SIG P320 had a love child. Um, it, it, but this is that contour, that shape, that grip shape reminds you a lot of that Ruger SR9 kind of uh, profile. Now, um, what we want to do is with, with this length of slide in play, you want to actually consider, wait a second, yeah, that's about the length of slide of a Glock 17. So we're comparing, are we comparing apples to apples or are we comparing apples to oranges here? So the old trusty Gen 2 Glock 17 comes out and then we get something really interesting. Now we have a lineup that we can work on. We've got our Glock 19, our SIG 320, our Canik TP9 SF Elite, and our Glock 17. And when you line them up, uh, let's bring the camera around so that you can see. Yeah, so the Glock, uh, the Glock 19 is, is the shortest, and then just by a very slight margin, the SIG P320, and then the Canik TP9 SF Elite, and yes, I have an aftermarket base pad on the Glock 17, but it is roughly the, the same size base pad. I had a, another base pad on it and checked it out there. Um, so uh, that's, the, that's the variance. So we'll kind of show it from both angles, and you see that you kind of have just a slowly slanting stagger. And these two that we're talking about, the SIG and the Canik, are very similar heights. Now, when you start to look at um, lining them all up on the base, it gets tricky. If you're gonna put the slides as the point of similarity, then you get into a weird spot because, the again, the grip starts so much deeper on the Canik than it does um, its competitors here. So then what you find is, though it looks at first glance like we've got a similar size to the Glock 19, I would argue that we're actually looking at a gun that's, uh, that's more carryable than the Glock 17, but it's far closer to being compared to the Glock 17 in carry. So, and the, and the, the SIG 320, uh, definitely a close, competitor there in this dimension, but not in the slide length if, if that is of concern to you. And depending on your body type, that is a concern for some, the length of how far down into their, their pants that they want it to go when they're sitting down. For some people, a, a longer slide is not a big deal. For other people, uh, a longer slide is a, is a huge deal um, if they're carrying an appendix and the, the how, it, it will dig into some people's thigh and not into others. So uh, just some things to consider. Let's go a level, a level deeper, shall we? Now, if we take down the SIG 320 because of its modularity, right? But the subcompact grip with the compact slide. Now here's a real carry conversation, I think. So you're comparing the Canik to the Glock 19. Now, when you're, when you're in this conversation and you have an option like the SIG P320 that allows for the, the dimension of the, the Canik, but it also allows you to put a grip on for roughly $40, um, you can put a, a grip on that's shorter than the Glock 19 and similar in uh, function. Of course, the Glock 19 is going to be a little bit easier to hold on to and shoot for most people. 
then going down a little notch down to this subcompact which it's pretty big to call a subcompact territory and I like that um, so then we're we'll just we'll just compare that to what a lot of people are doing realistically carrying the single stacks and a good example of that would be the Smith Smith and Wesson shield so let's see what we're looking at there all right so realistically uh, comparing uh, now I now my my uh, standard magazine for the shield has a mag guts uh, extension in it um, now if you imagine flush from right here so basically where that line is that's where um, that's where this this gun would be uh, if it's better for you to look at something stock uh, we will uh, we can look at the stock eight round base pad first okay and so we've got the Smith & Wesson Shield, which is a, a favorite single stack carry gun for a lot of people. And then what we have next is the SIG P320 um, with the compact slide and the subcompact grip stacked next to the Glock 19, the old standby. This happens to be the Talo edition with uh, uh, talon grips on it. And then we've got uh, this, this new offering from Canik, the TPSF Elite. So I'm gonna bring the camera down and show you how those contrast in size. All right, when we look at the grip size, what we're gonna see here is that with the extended um, magazine, th this uh, Smith & Wesson Shield is obviously slightly taller than SIG, but let's put what people would probably carry, um, and so we'll go with uh, my replacement for the standard magazine, but anyway, there's that Mag Guts extension, which you'll see is exactly even, which by the way, this is my preferred kind of height. I'm looking for, personally, I'm looking for this kind of height. It's just a tiny bit, I, though I've carried the Glock 19 for years, and I like it. Um, just this tiny bit shorter than Glock 19 height, I found to be exceptionally uh, comfortable and concealable. Um, especially in winter, the double stack isn't a huge concern for me. Obviously, the single stack is uh, more comfortable uh, overall, but I can carry a double stack just fine. So just looking at these real quickly, Let's think about it. With uh, standard from the factory, we would be looking at 8 plus 1. Here we're looking at 13, so 12 plus 1. Here we're looking at 15 plus 1, so 16. And here we're also looking at 15 plus 1, if I'm not mistaken. Let's double check. Yep, 15 plus 1. So, really, uh, my argument is going to be that I, I like the Canik. I think it's a really soft shooting gun. But when you start talking about it as a replacement for the Glock 19, start talking about it as a carry gun, um, sure, for the money, there's a lot of gun for the money. Uh, when you start really looking at the size, uh, you know, I think that difference in height and in slide length is significant. So uh, for me, that's a much larger gun. In fact, it, I could just about carry the Glock 17 uh, in comparison. I could just about carry the Glock 17. Uh, now, the Glock 17 is a little bit taller, so the Canik is going to be easier to carry. My argument would be that the Canik TPSF Elite is just about the largest gun that somebody of my body frame could realistically conceal, conceal carry every day. Uh, and that might be a really attractive thing to, to some of you. Uh, I'm looking to, to slide on the scale of comfort just a little bit more than that. Um, again, I'm not trying to go farther up the scale from the Glock 19. Uh, I'm looking at potential candidates that are 
a little bit down and erring a little bit more on the side of comfort, but you may differ. And so that's totally valid. So I'm just kind of providing this information for you so that you can uh, realistically make your decision. Uh, again, uh, we're just continuing our testing and sharing the information with you along the way. Out here, I won't compare the guns mentioned. All right, we're at zero, and we're gonna find the the widest part of the gun. I believe here is gonna be these guys with your slide stops and that's at 37.22 millimeters but realistically let's look at the frame I don't know how much so up here at the front of the frame we're looking at 28.6 and back at the back we're looking at 31.4 31.4 the Glock Old standby, we're looking at 29.8, the fattest part if I'm not mistaken, 29.2 up here, 29, yeah. So we're at the frame. Uh, yeah, for some reason it's a little, a little wider back at the back, 29.8. Um, Of course, just to even it out, there's the slide stop. We'll measure that. We're at 30.1 with the slide stop. 30.1. We're going to look at the SIG. Uh, P320. The SIG is 27 millimeters wide until you get to the slide stop. Which is going to be the widest point. It's 32.4 there. So, though the SIG looks like a wide little gun, it's not. It's not incredibly. And then you've got these little pushouts that makes it 29.7, like almost identical to the Glock. But if you come in, again, these little things make it a little bit wider. But I don't know how much of that you actually feel. So we're looking at a 27 millimeter. God. Um, wait a second. Oh, I forgot about this guy up here. 29.9, which makes it on your takedown lever, which your takedown lever and your slide stop, they mean something. Because if you're the, they have something to do with the holster that you're going to be able to carry the gun in. So if you want to get those in comparison to a single stack gun like the Smith & Wesson Shield, uh, you're going to drop down with the shield to 24.6 millimeters um, and at the slide stop 25.5. So a lot thinner, a lot thinner gun overall. That's why a lot of people have gone to them for comfort. Um, now again, when we start to look at this gun, which is in question, the Canik TPS SF Elite, um, I'm really going to argue that it is more comparable to the Glock 17 than it is the Glock 19 when it comes to carry. Um, but I think it is about as big a gun as I've had that I could realistically carry. But it is a larger gun than I choose to carry. It's a larger gun than I want to carry. Uh, so that's my take on the size comparison. I would be interested to know what your take is. Have a great one. As always, this is Rev saying don't waste your life.